All right, so this is probably the best way to print t-shirts in 2025, 2026 too, maybe. And just, just for context, we have the screen printer right here. We also have the DTG machine right here. But this has been doing us a lot of justice. Uh, reason being is just because of the directed garment printer it moves a little too slow. With screen printing, we can't do as many uh, full color prints as much as possible. Just because of the minimum order quantity is so high whenever we do that. So with DTF, we've been able to meet those requirements. So right now we're using the DTF 6000 by Uninet. Prints up about 24 inches, really 22 inches wide, and then however long you want it to be. So those full color jumbo size print t-shirts, you can absolutely do that. With any type of printing, we've had our ups, we've had our downs, but once you're up and running and you got full customer support with you, it's really, really consistent once you nail it down. So make sure you do have a room with some controlled humidity and we'll just go ahead and start printing. All right, so I'm just gonna do a quick little print design for you guys, just for example. So we have this one right here. It has some black in it. I actually have the knock me out black within the actual software, so we can do that as well. And if you have a lot of orders, you can just drag in as many images that you would like and it'll just print it back to back. So I have the same image, but I just wanna show you the knock me out black. I'm just gonna click on the properties and it's just pretty much gonna remove the black. So when you print on an actual black t-shirt, you won't be able to see it. So right here it says use knock me out black and then you can change the threshold on it I'm just gonna leave it at 70% we'll click OK and then we'll go ahead and start printing both of these so what I do suggest when it comes to printing especially if you're getting this size printer give it some slack give it some room that way you can pull the film up pick up some powder already and it's already on the dryer but there are smaller size printers you don't need this absolute dryer conveyor belt situation you don't need this whole entire full-size printer there's multiple different uh, printer size options you can click the link down below but I'm gonna go ahead and give this some slack about right there should do it some justice and then we'll go ahead and start printing Uh, the reason why it's faster than what it may seem is because you're able to print out a lot while you are either pressing the shirt or you know you're paying it minor attention and you can just let it do its thing you can print multiple things up you can queue it up and that way it's printing out like hundreds of designs at once and then you can come back to it cut it out get it ready to press versus directed garment you know you have to tend to it right after it's printing so pretty much you're printing a shirt it takes five to six minutes this probably takes the same amount of minutes for like one design but the thing is you can chew up many designs with directed garment five to six minutes you're still tending to it you have to pull the other shirt off put the other one back on then you have to cue the next print that's actually in line instead with this one it's pretty much two different organization processes going on you have a whole bunch of printing going on then you can already move on to the next phase which is a whole bunch of pressing or if you're just selling the film itself just roll it up ship it to the customer so it's kind of crazy how dtf and transfers has always kind of been some kind of industry standard. It's really picked up for small businesses, home businesses, and so forth. Uh, typically, if we had what? We had heat transfer vinyl, we had dye sublimation, we had heat transfers that we used to have to order out. You had uh, screen printing, directed garment, feel like I'm missing something, and embroidery. So it's kind of crazy how DTF has pretty much become a standard uh, and a pretty much an industry standard here. Yeah. I mean, you've even seen people with like whole screen printing operations for you just pressing transfers now. So it's pretty crazy. So I actually, let me go ahead and show you the speed. So that whole time I was talking to you, it literally just started and this is the first print. So I would say actually it is a little faster than directed garment and it's giving it the white underbase right now. And the white underbase is what the powder is gonna adhere to. The conveyor dryer is actually gonna heat up the, that powder. And that powder is pretty much your adhesive to the actual shirt itself or the substrate, whatever you're pressing it onto. And I will say, make sure you do have proper ventilation. We have this right here, this extractor that's taking some of the fumes out. We actually have a hose that's running from the bottom of this to the outside of the building so as you can see while this is printing i could absolutely be doing something else right now here's the other one with the knock me out black as you can see it doesn't look like you know the black is there so it doesn't look like the print is proper until you actually press it so this is really nice or if you press on a black shirt that way you don't have just full-on ink on top of the actual black shirt this one right here feels really nice whenever you have more spacing in between you can't really feel the actual DTF itself. 
lot of people think it feels like a sticker and whatnot, but whenever you prep your files properly, it looks a whole lot nicer and it feels a lot better. But honestly, we've sold thousands and thousands of DTF shirts. Uh, the only time that we really hear someone have a problem with DTF printing is typically a printer who like over criticizes their work. Like you can go inside a Nike, you can go inside Adidas and you will find DTF prints and whatnot. DTF has really become uh, a standard. It's actually been a standard before like, you know, uh, printers have become mainstream. It's just that, you know, now printers are easily more accessible. And honestly, it's made our lives a whole lot easier. We probably outsource about two, three thousand dollars at DTF per month and just having this printer itself in-house and not even selling transfers has saved us roughly two, three thousand dollars every single month. All right, so once the dryer is on, it's actually pretty loud. This is where the magic pretty much happens. There are lots of dangers when it comes to the actual powders. Uh, a lot of people wear masks. I've seen some people wear full on suits. Obviously, just make sure you're at least wearing gloves, have proper ve uh, ventilation. Uh, obviously, I don't have gloves on. I just dragged the film, didn't touch the powder. I will say this thing does look intimidating at first, but it's not after you really get used to it. Let me show you guys a little bit of, let me show you a little bit of what's going on. Oven dry is pretty much turning on the actual heat for the actual heater right there. You can control the temperatures right here. This right here is to actually make the conveyor actually move. This is powder, so you can manually do it, as you can see. You can put on auto, so it's coming in in intervals powder clear if I hit that button I don't want to knock off this film right now but I'll show you in a second uh, pretty much that way all the powder is not too chunky and it's pretty much like a flat even amount of powder throughout the whole entire image so for this one right here I'm wasting a whole lot of film just because I wanted to show you guys these two images but when we're printing a whole lot pretty much we we'll drag the film down put a roll right here and it just wraps up all of the film for us Basically what you want to do, you want to make sure that you have it nice and flat. So the first thing you always want to do is do a pre-press. Pre-press it for about five seconds. So you see all the wrinkles are gone. Put your DTF on there and make sure it's straight. We do have, you know, you can get some stuff like this off Amazon to help you with the placement and stuff like that, but we're professionals, so we don't need that. So I always press my DTF with a parchment paper on top just to protect not only the garment, but also the top of the DTF. Press down for 15 seconds at 325. So then once you come up, remove your thing. As you can see, let it cool for a second. So we're gonna let it cool off. We did the uh, pre-moisture, preheat. That way all the moisture comes out. So most of the time people call DTF poor quality, but sometimes it's one or two things. It's either the printer or it's the heat press itself. Sometimes people use a cheap heat press, they don't get the moisture out, and then it just, you know, people call it a bad print. Absolutely. All right, so you let it cool down a little bit. So now what you do, just pull it off. The main thing you wanna do is just guarantee that everything is still down. And now you have a perfect DTF transfer. Look at that firm print too. Now you can give it a post press and you're pretty much good. Yep, you post press it. Post press with a T-sheet. Lay the T-sheet on top. All right, so what's the T-sheet do or the T-seal? I forgot what it's called, but it, what's it do? It makes the print feel less like a sticker. So a lot of time people complain about DTF where it feels like a sticker. This helps it like smooth out. Also, it takes the shine off. So it doesn't really look like a sticker anymore. You only need to press this for about five seconds. Okay. This is nice and cool. Oh. 
Um, so we did that one so you can see the difference. So that one we didn't do to knock me out black, but if you see this one right here, we're gonna press this one so you guys can see what that looks like. And right now we're gonna print the knockout black on a black t-shirt. So anytime you're printing a black shirt, you don't need to print black ink. So that's what we're about to show you right now. And then you can always turn down the, the underbase too. As you can see, like we got more of a opaque effect here. Like with a header gray shirt, you kind of want it to like kind of see through so you can still see the header as you can see here. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but these look really good. Man, this one looks good. Absolutely. <laughs> that right there is with the black knocked out. That one right there. Uh, we could have turned up the blacks a little more too. That way it's a little darker, but either way, anytime you're putting it on black, definitely do that. All right, so maintenance on this printer has been very, very low. All you have to do is really open it up, clip up the ink lines. I didn't really need to clip them all up because I only have one print head right now, two print heads. So I'm gonna carry this on over. I'm gonna get some capping solution in my syringe right here. Boom, trying to do this one-handed. Pretty much we're just uh, putting solution on top so our print heads can sit on top of it so it doesn't clog up, the ink doesn't get dried up. And now all we do on the computer is just click wet and that's just gonna soak the print heads directly on top of there and there's one other ink line i got a clip on the back which is just white ink and pretty much literally never had any issues with white ink i remember back in the day white ink used to be a headache it's it was pretty much anything uh, but this also had this little agitator in it so it always uh, mixes up the white ink so it doesn't get really solid and it, it never dries up so pretty much this that's it we can just shut it off So if you're truly interested in just printing yourself and you want to do full color prints and you want something, you're already in production at the least. Maybe you want to sell transfers. Maybe you want to sell prints to customers. Maybe you're already a screen print shop like we have right now and you need full color options. It's either getting a DTR printer or getting multiple DTG printers because like one DTG printer is just not going to cut it. So this video helped you out. I'll link the links down below to more printers or comment down below and I'll see you guys on the metric.